within that context, the Commission has uh, engaged in the promotion of the rights of passengers in various areas. For instance, we have uh, worked with the electoral body to ensure that persons with disability are able to exercise their rights. I think as a Human Rights Commission, what we're doing is making sure that those silent voices of those people whose rights are violated are heard. It's very difficult to, to talk about these issues in violation of human rights in countries where there's no rule of law. So that's why we, we, are, we are mindful of the need to, to be passionate about your rights, to push the envelope more and more. I think the important point to understand about a national human rights institution is that they are independent of government and they become, in a sense, the conscience of a country. They're there to protect human rights in the countries where they're located. So their role is to investigate human rights abuses, educate people about what human rights means and to hold the government to account. National human rights institutions occupy a space between government on the one hand and civil society on the other hand. They have similarities with each, but they are fundamentally different from both. Independent national human rights institutions play a, a vital role in safeguarding human rights and in promoting human rights, democracy and, and the rule of law. In a, in a healthy democracy, they do that uh, through independent monitoring, through robust advocacy uh, and through public education. You see, we, we must be seen as champions for the protection and promotion of human rights for the citizens. So what, what we do is to make sure that people, firstly, they know their rights, they know where to go when their rights are violated, and uh, people get remedies. We can help uh, large number of poor people in the country. They are, oh, common man has got a series of problems, which they cannot go to court. They cannot hire a expensive lawyer. So they come to us. Myanmar is in the midst of a democratization process. The people are talking about democracy, talking about uh, human rights. Samoa is a small and peaceful country, but the world is changing, fast changing, and uh, changes in the world put strains on any system. But we want to address, as a national human rights institution, we want to address these things from the human rights perspective. States have the obligation to protect, respect and fulfill human rights. And national human rights institutions with their monitoring function, with their promotion function, can get state attention to redress and remedy violations, not only at the hands of state actors, but also non-state actors. Uh, they have stronger powers that aren't available to civil societies. They can investigate human rights uh, uh, violations. They have strong connections to government, um, but they, they, they can advocate, you know, courts can't advocate. Uh, but they've also got the access to parliament, they've got the access to ministers, etc. They've got the access to the media if they want to. You know? um, and then if they, if they play their cards right, they can, they can be the, the people who are really bringing about change. Hello. In one of the interviews in Kabul, uh, the journalist asked me that you have a very powerful enemy. And I said, that's the good part of my life, that I am causing problem for the powerful people, not for the victims. So that's what NHRIs are. They're independent, and they have to remain independent and capacitated strongly in order to at least address questions of injustice and impunity and inequity that goes on all over the world. They lie at the heart of national protection systems and that's the point that's most important. I do my work with passion. I'm, I, I really tell you I'm, I'm doing my job because I believe. Even with all the frustrations that we find, 
even we can overcome the difficulties and change the world to the better.